allow me to invite um, our Stephanie Tan, uh, our Head of Investor Development, uh, to take you through uh, some of the salient points of Guidebook 3. Uh, over to you, Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you, Tan Sri. Distinguished guests, industry participants, members of the media, and fellow colleagues, good morning, everyone. I'm Stephanie Tan, Head of Investor Development at Busan Malaysia. So prior to joining the exchange, I was a sell-side equity research analyst servicing local and foreign fund managers. Hence, I can attest to some of the factors that investors look for in companies. I'll spend the next 15 minutes or so to walk you through Guidebook 3 that we are unveiling today, entitled Strengthening Stakeholder Management and Investor Relations. The shift from shareholder value maximization to holistic stakeholder management underscores the importance of maintaining a balance between meeting the specific needs of shareholders while addressing the expectations of the wider stakeholder groups. Today, the broader group of stakeholders can directly and indirectly influence business performance, and this is essential for the sustainability and continued success of companies. The third guidebook looks at the best practices of stakeholder management in PLCs, including the importance of the investor relations, or in short, IR program, and associated activities that would ultimately lead to improvements in the overall performance of PLCs. This guidebook provides considerations for PLCs of different sizes and maturity to help guide effective stakeholder management strategies and plans. The guidebook highlights the distinct aspects of effective investor relations and approaches in engaging the many stakeholder groups. In addition, the guidebook also emphasizes on the various means and modes of engaging and communicating to build and maintain relationships, trust and confidence with stakeholders. In this book, the dimensions of effective stakeholder engagement and investor relations is anchored on six core attributes. These attributes help frame collectively the components, activities, and desired outcomes for the PLC's stakeholder management program. The six core attributes cover, one, intent and desired outcomes, two, stakeholder groups, three, facets, four, channels, five, enablers, and lastly, six, board management and functional involvement. In chapter two, stakeholder management and business processes covers the process of organizing, monitoring, and improving relationships with stakeholders. It involves systematically identifying stakeholders, analyzing their needs and expectations, and planning and implementing various engagement activities. A good stakeholder management process will be the means through which companies are able to coordinate interactions and assess the status and quality of relationships with various stakeholders, which has shown to contribute to overall business performance. This chapter is supplemented with tools and frames to help guide organizations with a case study of how this is implemented. For example, in this chapter, we highlighted Arsenal Football Club as a case study, where they implemented Mandelow's power interest matrix to identify key stakeholders that have a stake in the operations of the Emirates Stadium. Chapter 3 deep dives into the considerations, roles, processes, and impact of IR within a company in addressing the investor community. The chapter elaborates on the aspects of IR both as a process to be managed and as a function within the organization. The key activities associated with IR and the interdependencies are further explained and referenced. This includes, but is not limited to, a representation of what the investor community universe may look like and the impact of their actions, key characteristics of a successful IR program, insights from Malaysian stakeholders such as investors, analysts and IR firms, for PLCs to understand their priorities and perspectives, the capital market landscape in Malaysia, and the views on the IR function. 
Chapter 4 focuses on communication channels available for companies to engage with its broader stakeholders and the more specific investor community. To increase reach and impact, companies are re-evaluating their communication strategies by considering and adopting a combination of formal, complementary and emerging platforms of communications, which of course includes social media and other virtual platforms. While there are many modes and channels at our disposal, companies need to constantly uphold professional discernment or good judgment on what information needs to be communicated and how it might be received or perceived by stakeholders. The chapters provide examples of formal as well as emerging channels with considerations on how each channel can be applied by companies. Given the more dynamic business environment in which we currently operate, PLCs are now faced with the heightened risk of crisis events disrupting their day-to-day -day operations. Whilst these companies may be able to address and withstand the impact of penalties, remediation costs and reputational damage over the short term, managing the longer-term impact of a crisis on a company's valuation and attractiveness is heavily dependent on its ability to effectively engage its stakeholders and in a timely manner. Chapter 5 focuses on communicating with stakeholders in times of crisis with a focus on recognising the importance of crisis management and having a crisis communications team and a plan in place. The final chapter of the guidebook touches on the enablers for an effective stakeholder management and IR. The first enabler is on leadership and culture. With the rise of shareholder and stakeholder activism, the conduct of boards, CEOs and senior management are watched closely and scrutinised by stakeholders. Leadership and organisational culture certainly shapes a company's business conduct vis-à-vis -vis its engagement with its stakeholders. The second enabler is on leveraging data for effective stakeholder management. Use of data enables greater visibility into stakeholder needs, assessment of their influence and support better responses. The third enabler introduces qualitative and quantitative measures for PLCs to better understand the performance of their stakeholder management programs. These potential measures provide insights into the effectiveness of the current plans and feedback for future enhancements. The final enabler covers the use of tools and technologies. Companies need to embrace tools and enabling technology to continually listen and stay in touch with their stakeholders' needs, which evolve from time to time. Throughout the guidebook, as with all the guidebooks in the PLC Transformation Program series, we include supplemental links of videos and case studies from both local and global companies to help bring to light the concepts and practices highlighted. For instance, there are links to video recordings of the expectations from the investor community. In developing this guidebook, we had the privilege to interview representatives from a couple of GLICs for example, the Chief Investment Officer of EPF, who provided perspectives and expectations of institutional fund managers with regards to IR approaches or practices among larger Malaysian PLCs. Implementation considerations and practice aids in the book also serve as a reference for corporate leaders and IR professionals with suggested actions or checklists that PLCs can consider. As this is my last slide on the preview of Guidebook 3, let me highlight a few call to actions. Number one, recognize that stakeholder management is essential and should not be left to chance. Two, develop an IR function that acts as a bridge between the leaders of the companies to the wider investor community. Three, Embrace the various communication channels and enablers for effective stakeholder management and IR. And lastly, four, institutionalize stakeholder management and IR as a shared responsibility and collective effort across the organization. We hope that this book will be useful to all companies, 
For smaller companies who are just beginning their journey, we hope this book will provide you with enough information and resources to feel confident in putting in place the necessary processes and initiatives to get things moving. It is important for companies to have strong stakeholder management to get started. For companies that are more advanced in the IR space, we hope that you will be able to gain further insight into other areas that you may not be addressing yet. There are always areas for improvement, and we hope that you will find it in this book. We encourage PLCs to ask questions in the next panel or webinar sessions on this topic to learn from one another, with which Busa Malaysia will bring to you via the PLC Transformation Program. I'd also like to share that the exchange has also embarked on other related initiatives, such as the Busa Research Incentive Scheme, RISE, as well as the IR and PR program to raise PLC's profiles, especially elevating investors' awareness on strong companies in our small to mid-cap category. Our hope is that our collective efforts will help build and sustain interests of investors in our local companies. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie, for your presentation.